Welcome to Zentangle Project Pack number 21. This is day six. Wow, day six. That's My name is Rick. <laughs> Hi, I'm Maria, and I'm just sort of tagging along with Rick on this, right. on this one. And I, I love that. <laughs> so uh, we're going to start with pretty much all of our gear. Right, right. And it's, a, of, it's a nice collection. It's a really good collection. And I'm going to take a moment and appreciate our tools, appreciate the uh, materials and this great piece of paper that Maria designed and Molly put together. And I am going to start with my black Micron 01 and we're going to do the tangle Arucus. And Arucus starts with an orb and then it starts with lines. Now normally these would extend out, but we're going to uh, use these in a slightly, you know, like they, they're capped at the end, okay? Propellers. <laughs> Propellers. Actually, that's very uh, intuitive because you'll, you'll learn more about this flower. So saying that it's a propeller. Oh, it propels. That really may be, well, Hold that thought because this particular botanical is something that we are sharing with you that I don't think very many people have seen. Okay. Yeah, <laughs> and I'll tell you all about it. <laughs> so you can see that uh, Arucus is uh, based on aura and the... Uh, the elemental strokes are curves, orbs, and straight lines. And what's really neat is this goes back and forth between creating those little propeller things mm -hmm. and then auraing that initial circle. It's such a simple concept and uh and it delivers something that I wasn't expecting when I totally first totally unexpected. And it's, it's just you go back and forth one thing to another. It's a great meditation. It is. And this is a particularly interesting tangle because this one came all by itself when Molly was on the phone with someone from Sakura. And it was a long call, and she was just playing around and exploring different things, and she came up with this sequence of strokes. So now what we're doing is we're basically auraing that first, what we're calling a propella. And we're just going to do that around each one of those. Uh, we've got five there. And I'm sort of doing it a little bit shorter than whatever the ones are before. But they don't have to be equal. And now I'm, again, like Maria said, we're just going to go back and forth. So it's sort of like, you know, shampoo, rinse and repeat, and just doing it again and again. Turning your tile, remembering to breathe, relax, all of those good things. So once we've done that aura-ing, we're going to go back, and again, doing it a little bit shorter, just sort of randomly. Capping it. So it looks like skyscrapers in yeah, the distance, yeah. right? And just do that on each one. And then you know what comes next, right? We're going to aura that inner orb. And you can start to see the, uh, you know, the back and forth here and the cool pattern that's coming. And so the, the significance of telling that story about Molly being on the conversation with Sakura is that Arucus is Sakura spelled backwards. Ah, well, there you go. <laughs> right? So every time I like can't remember how to spell Arucus, I just think right. of how Sakura is spelled. So we've got room for a few more here. So let's, let's do another round, so to speak. And then another set of auras on the orb. 
So if this was a song, <laughs> I'm going to guess it would be like row, row, row your boat. Okay, gently, right? Down the stream with the stream, right? Yeah. Okay. Rowing your boat, not somebody else's. Right. <laughs> Okay, you're so gonna, you're gonna make me sorry I said that, right? <laughs> okay, so we're gonna introduce a new tile, a new tile, a new tangle, and it's called Rambles. Did you come up with this one, babe? Yes. Okay, this is another Maria, and this starts out with this just lovely, you know, oscillating S shape. And now I'm going to go in and take off. See what I'm doing? And then when I get to the edge, I'm just going to drop down and meet that outer curve. Now, I figured out a way that works for me to do this, and that is where to start the second line. I imagine like drawing from a hollow ball. See, I'm going from that corner, and then where it comes out, I just draw it. When I get to the edge of that, uh, S shape, I just bring the line down to meet the curve. That's brilliant, right? Right? It's so simple. And I think that makes this one really easy. So I'm following the edge or the corner in a hollow bar fashion, meet that, come down and meet the curve. Follow the corner, come out, and let's just bring it to a little point. So there you have the basic form of rambles and it's in the honor honor of our grandson Ramsey. It was just named for him. It yeah. was named for him. And you know these create these little shapes. So you could fill this in with borders that could be, you know, like a you know, it could be a shattuck on one side and another tangle on the other side. And you know, you can just just imagine what you could do with this. And uh so this, this is just a quick introduction to give you the, uh, you know, the basic structure and to plant seeds of, ooh, I can do this and add this and play with this and, and just use, you can even think of these as, uh, you know, sections within which to put other tangles. You could make that ribbon really, really wide or right. really, really narrow. Right. Very, we did, we very did a simple. whole project pack on ribbons. Do you remember that? Mm -hmm. the, the big, the big one. Okay, so let's get back to our uh, botanical, and what we notice on this blossom is in between each one of these, um, like skyscape skyscraper propellers. <laughs> Say okay. that one. Well, yeah, yeah. <laughs> is going to be a rambles that is or, or coming out. rambling ribbon? A rambling ribbon. You're like intuiting the whole thing because, no. uh, yeah. We, we've actually not discussed this, but she is, uh, she knows where I'm going. And you can see I'm just doing that hollabaw from behind and then auraing that very random initial S stroke. Right? Isn't that cool? Mm -hmm. Very simple. And it can be as, you know, random a shape. And however you do it, it's going to, you just make it work. You know, if you unwound a ribbon from a spool, it's going to go in all sorts of different directions. So we're going to do the same thing here. And these ribbons are very, very, um, or these, you know, they, they look like ribbons, but again, in this particular botanical, they're very hard to see. And you'll, you'll understand that later. But this is a, a best approximation that we have for what these like, almost like tendrils or mm -hmm. it's, it's very flowing. Mm -hmm. They move very easily. Like paper thin, right? 
absolutely paper thin. They're actually, they, they appear to be translucent. And it's uncertain, well, the number of roles that these projections, these rambles play, uh, seems to have to do with uh, regeneration, with propulsion, uh, with... It's propulsing ribbons. Propulsing ribbons, yeah. Okay. You, you wouldn't think that, but this is like... We're, this is very... Um, this particular plant, we don't know that much about, so we're really, really looking forward to uh, everybody that is working on this to come up with some more data because we think this this one is particularly important um, and at the same time we're sort of getting ahead of ourselves because we have very little data on this but we want to share as much of it that we have with you so you can see like one of those little rambles up there they just you know went under the other one in a holobar fashion and I'm just sort of filling up the space or watching how they would have filled up the space because it's a very adaptive uh, plant. Or it appears to be. This is a really fun tangle to do because you can like layer it and you can fill up a good amount of space with it, or you can you know, spend as much time with it as you want. Now we have the, uh, the basic structure. Let's go in and look at some of the details of this plant. Mm -hmm. So we've got... Uh, if is it like a gold color? Yeah. Um, got our gold jelly roll. Uh, jelly roll. I don't know what it's called, but it does look gold well, here. Kind of ochreish. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So putting in some tipple and then filling in the little interstices and in, in between. That's what the center looks like. Ah. Pretty close. And I'm using my red-ish chalk pencil. And those little aura pieces around the orb, the orb aura. We're going to uh, show those as red. And then the propeller skyscrapers. Okay. We're going to show those as yellow or gold or... I That's think pretty gold, yellow. That's right? Pretty yellow. And so we're going to do those. Going to add... Oh. Hopefully all five of them. Right. I, eventually I do get to it. <laughs> <laughs> You'll see. That, that's one of the fun parts of doing these things is, you know, you, you're going through and then oftentimes like when I'm shading or doing a next step, it's like, oh, I forgot that. And then you, you know, go back and... Eventually you'll, you'll eventually. figure it. Now these rambles appear to be green, and, but this is a, actually a really perfect color, this pencil. Uh, because it suggests that it's gossamer, almost like a, a dragonfly's wing without, without the, the structure inside it. Mm -hmm. So just going to, and I turn my tile even with this, you know, it's whatever is easiest for you, just in a traditional Zentangle format, uh, there is, you can turn your tile and the idea is what is most comfortable for you. So I haven't moved my right hand where it's on the table. I'm just, and then I go move it. Oh, I just, <laughs> <laughs> I just uh, realized, oh yeah, I gotta do that one. But the idea is to move the surface under your hand instead of moving your hand to the surface. So unlike like a painting that's on, clamped in an easel or something, uh, since there is no up or down or left or right on most of our images, you can just turn it around. So the, uh, the subtle differences in the colors is going to be an interesting uh, part of the pattern, I think. You know, adding these 
gives you, gives you an option to do it different ways. So it just gives a whole other layer of interpretation and creativity. And as you're doing this, you know, for everybody that has the, uh, the kit, so you'll notice I'm using that large uh, sharpener, which does a nice angle for those chalk pencils. But even though we're using particular colors, you may decide to use different colors because this whole area of research is that when you see this particular image, you may or may not see it in the same colors. And I, I think it's really good to find out <clears throat> all of the different colors that this oh, flower, this blossom, comes this in. blossom comes in. But I think that if it's a wild flower, it's usually one. Well, and this is wild. Okay. It is a particularly wild flower. You mean you can buy flowers at a nursery and get them in six different colors, but right. I'm not sure about wild flowers. And then just going in and in one of my other uh, uh, botanicals, I was using the the pencil as a tortillon, and I tried it again here and. I don't know if it was the humidity of the day, but it seems to me I like the, uh, on this one I'm using the actual paper tortillon. But isn't that beautiful just the way it, it's so simple. So thank you for this. This was a really good tangle, or is a really good tangle. It kind of uh, adds a regalness to if you were doing something on a, you know, on a right? project or... Is that the right word, regalness? Yeah, well, it looks like some sort of great award that you might get. Right. And I'm just adding a little white chalk to the, to the highlights there. Give it a little more uh, dimensionality. Yeah, it looks like a beautiful uh, something that would be put on. See, I forgot to do this one, so let's catch that. And with the tortillon, just a, the lightest of touch. I'm, I'm barely touching the paper. And so there we have this amazing... Uh, well, it almost looks like an aquatic... Yes. Uh, something that, that's in the water, and that's why the ribbons are going like that, right? Right. And I want to emphasize like the over and under of how those are interweaving. And all you have to do is just put a little bit of uh, graphite there and spread it around and it looks, you can get that image, right? Hmm. And then just a little bit of uh, taking the graphite that's on the tortillon and just doing around the edge there. All right. Now, I really like the, you know, the way I was, or pretty much everybody has been doing some sort of background in that oval. So I'm taking the blue pencil and very, very lightly uh, just putting in a little bit around the center part. And the reason I'm doing that, and I'll give you a clue of where we're going here, this particular blossom floats in the air. Ooh. Okay. That's very cool. It's very it's very cool. And it's one of the reasons it's it's not not many people know about it because you're not really looking for flowers in the air. No, the you you aren't. You aren't. <laughs> right. Not and, not the last time I checked. No. And and so now I'm taking the tortillon and just very lightly, you know, spreading that out and then just making it dissolve to the edge. Because I wanted, you know, th since this is in the air, it's like, okay, in the blue sky and, and like all of kite, that. Like a fancy kite. It's like a kite, but without a, without a um, kite string. Well, this, it, one, it this one might be invisible, like, it, like, a, like a line, a plastic line, oh, so yeah. you wouldn't see it. Ooh. It's I never thought it of It drops that. its own line down like a spider. Oh, that's a possibility. Yeah, we've got to, maybe you guys uh, out there will uh, add that to your description. See that. <laughs> you may see it, yeah. 
you know, I just assumed, well, you know what they say about that, yes. that, that it was floating free in the sky. Uh, yeah, let's figure that one out. So I love how the, uh, the gentleness of the chalk can be like invited into the fibers of the paper and, it, and it, where it was like really rough, it becomes very smooth. Right, mm. and and I like the contrast of the the blue against the uh, gold there. Well, you don't even see the blue; you see the yellow, you see the green, and the blue disappears in the background, but just makes it more prominent. Mm. So I'm playing around with uh, these lovely support struts of the inner oval, and. Uh, are you, are you calling my design a strut? <laughs> well, it's like... <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what to do with that. I don't know. Is it's that, very is complimentary. That, is Just it? take okay. it as a compliment. Okay, I'm going to look it up. <laughs> All right? You strut your stuff, right? <laughs> and you can see how, like, mixing the blue and the yellow gives that little green where they overlap there. And then around the outside, just to... You know, as I was doing this, recording this, it's like, ah, oh, I'm going to play with this and see what I do next. And I sort of made this whole part up as I went along. And I'm just spreading the... Spreading the uh, love. Spreading the golden love. Yeah. Just bringing that in. Turning your tile, using the tortillon on its side. And pretty much for this whole project, we've kept our tortillons... Uh, Sideways. Well, no, sideways, but also, you know, I got the yellow one, and I've got the oh, blue yeah, one, yeah, and I've got yeah. the green one. Yeah. But I'm going to keep mixing them up. So a little bit of graphite on the outside. Again, really light, holding it low. Touching it with the tortillon. And it just sort of frames the whole thing. So, you know, like like a beautiful, uh, I don't know, cameo or uh, what are those things like paperweights? You know, the glass paperweights that are oval and, you know, domed and everything. I, that's, the, that's all I know about them. Yeah. Okay, so what's the name? This is called Rambling Arucus. Ah. Okay, because I wonder, I wonder it just... Why floats around <laughs> on its rambles, <laughs> right? I guess, if, if one knew what a ramble looked like. Well, now we do. That's true, that's true. So Rambling Arucus is the name of this uh, absolutely stunningly amazing botanical. Looks good. All right. Now, the uh, description here are the tangles used are rambles and, of course, a rucus, which is, let's see, is it A? Yes, because Sakura. Yes. <laughs> That's what I went through. And, of course, with a little bit of tipple. Let's see if I, re I think I remember that. Yep. A little bit of tipple. And so, uh, I think a lot of the flowers seem to have um, tipple in them. Well, that would make sense. Right? That would make sense. Now, for the seed, this is where there's a bit of conjecture, but the seed seems to be a small snippet of rambles. Or, or swath. A swath or a swatch of rambles. Okay? So this swath of rambles... What we think, now this is conjecture, but we've got some good evidence that this is true. And I know this is true because he's using his hands to talk. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> I'm just stipulating. Was, yes. <laughs> These little bits of rambles <laughs> float around. Oh, all right. And at some point, if two or three meet up, they like connect and in that connection, the out of that connection, the arucus blossom forms. For, from three of its own at least seeds. It, well, we think it needs to be at least three. It could be just two, it could be two or three. But once they 
connect, there it repeats appears to be, and that's why I'm putting this in parentheses, because we're not certain, but this is what we think. We see them floating. So as I said earlier, the color is approximate, and the size, we don't know what the size is. How can you not know what the size well, is? You'll see. Okay. It might be tiny, or it might be really, really massive. Okay. It's, it's hard to tell, and you, I, trust me, you're going to know. You're going to understand okay. this. All right. Okay. Okay. Massive. Massive. Like, like in, a, in a field. Like giant. Like a... Like like a f somebody stomping out a zentangle on a field. Well, the reason is it's airborne, and it's airborne. You can see the seed. You know that whole basic of basis of the idea. The problem is, if you look directly at it, it disappears. You can only see it through the corner of your eye. It's out of, in the peripheral. In the peripheral vision. So it that's, only exists in the peripheral. Yes. Uh, that's very profound. I think. Yes. Okay. So thank you very much. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Okay. Thank you so much. the virtues are insight, joy, connection, and we think that has to do with the the seeds connecting, you know, the little ram ramble bits. Yeah. And then out of that growth. So, so rambling a ruckus. Ha. Huh. And he's going back again. So I looked at it and I thought, you know, I really want to take advantage of those beautiful little triangle, triangularly shaped triangles of life. Yes, right. I love that. So I want to give them a little texture with the color and and also to uh, you know echo that centerpiece, that oval. Okay. And so just put a little bit of touch of color and shading, and then mush it all together with the uh, tortillon. If you were to look up that word. What? Mush it all together? Mush. Mush. <laughs> it's different than mush. What is it? Well, how is it spelled? Blend. How about blend? Uh, how, how is it spelled? M-U-S-H. <laughs> <laughs> That's mush. It's also mush. <laughs> okay, so... We're pretty close, and that, that lower triangle just is asking me to put my chop there. So let's do that with that, that other pen. Frames that really nicely. And I think now we'll say that I've got that page done for the putting it all together. It's perfect. It's perfect. I love it. And I'm going to go outside and look in the sky now for my flowers. Through the corner of your eye. Oh, my God. I can do that. Yes. Okay. Well, thanks, everybody. We look forward to seeing your rambling arucus. <laughs> and you might find a whole bunch of different characteristics or, or um, virtues that yes. we just hadn't discovered yet. Exactly, because this is all very new. So... See you next time. Have fun. Bye now. See ya.